The U.S. is pledging $100 million to support a Kenya-led multinational multi force to combat gangs in Haiti. Haiti's Prime Minister is urging the U.N. Security Council to approve the deployment. Gang violence has overwhelmed Haiti's national police. From April to June, hundreds of people have been killed, injured or kidnapped. And the most powerful gang boss is calling for an armed uprising against the government. So for some insight, I'm now joined by William O'Neill in New York. He's a UN expert on the human rights situation in Haiti. William, thank you very much for your time. Now, gangs control roughly 80% of the capital, Port-au-Prince. Tell us more about the situation there and how it came to this. Well, it is quite dramatic. The gangs control, as you said, roughly 80% of the capital and the immediate surrounding areas. And in Haiti, everything is really very, very centralized. So if you control the capital, you control huge chunks of the economy, trade, commerce, and, and political action. So uh, it's, it's, it's been, and the violence the gangs use is just at, at a very, very severe level. Uh, women being raped and tortured, executions, kidnappings, uh, and it just isn't safe uh, to move around. And so this affects people's ability to go to school, to go to markets. It, it affects life in every single possible way. Both the U.S. and Kenyan presidents have called on the U.N. this week to support a security support mission. What will this mission entail? And in your view, is this what Haiti needs? I think Haiti does need this. Uh, the police, as you said, are overwhelmed. They admit that. Uh, they need help. They need support. They need specialized expertise, especially with regard to SWAT-type operations against organized crime, intelligence, uh, stopping money flows and flows of arms and, and munitions. Um, so I think it is necessary. Um, we'll see. It still it has to come to a vote at the Security Council. We hope that will happen this week. Uh, but the exact contours of how many, which countries they'll come from, Kenya has agreed to lead the mission. Uh, Jamaica, the Bahamas, and, Saint, uh, and Antigua and Barbuda have committed uh, personnel. Uh, there are talks with other countries possibly contributing. But I think this is more than needed. It's, it's actually very late in the day. It should have happened a long time ago. Well, exactly. And this, this has been stalled for months because no country had agreed to lead a mission to the country. Now Kenya is saying it will lead it. Why has it taken so long? And why now Kenya? What will they gain from a mission like this? But also, what are the major risks for a country to lead this? Well, well, the risks are um, it's going to be hard. It's not a simple, straightforward operation. Uh, Kenya has experience in very tough areas like uh, Somalia, South Sudan, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So I'm convinced they do have personnel that are quite capable and competent, but there are risks. There's no question about that. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's really political. I think the need for this type of presence in Haiti to help the Haitian police um, has been quite evident for over a year now. But I think there are geopolitical issues at stake. Uh, there's a reluctance. A lot of people have Haiti fatigue. There have been previous missions in Haiti, and some have done some very good things in Haiti, but there have been problems in the past, such as cholera uh, brought by UN peacekeepers, sexual abuse. So it's, it's, it's a very complex uh, emergency with a complex history. Talk to us a little bit about this anti-foreign intervention uh, sentiment that's not just in civil society groups, but across Haiti. How can a mission like this uh, manage that kind of pushback? And what do you think are the consequences if something like this fails? You know, what kind of a, a migration or human rights situation are we looking at uh, in Haiti? Are we looking at a mass migration from the country? Well, it's hard to imagine Haiti being much worse now, frankly. I've been working in and on the country for over 30 years. I've never seen it this bad. And the recent closing of the border by the Dominican Republic only exacerbates the humanitarian crisis because Haiti depends for a big percentage of its food and medical supplies and, and medicines uh, that come in from the Dominican Republic. And now the border's closed. So it, it, it's hard to imagine things getting worse. I think the opposition to an intervention is vastly overstated. Most Haitians I know, in fact, every Haitian I know has said they want an intervention. There's a small group of politicians and others uh, that are against it, largely for all different kinds of reasons. They don't represent very much other than themselves and their near family and friends. Um, I think polls have shown uh, that there's an overwhelming majority in Haiti that would want an intervention, but it want, they want it done the right way, that would respect human rights, most importantly. And I also think Haitians are telling me, let's make sure this is the last time this ever has to be done. Let's do it right this time, so there's never a need to have this kind of intervention in Haiti again. 
All right, William, really appreciate your insight. William O'Neill for us, UN expert on the human rights situation in Haiti.